listen, I told you guys that I wanted to like do a little segment where I'm just answering you guys' questions right now because news is slow and I wanted to talk to you guys. So I asked you on Instagram what questions you had for me and here are some of them. Are the men you date or sleep with gay or straight? Am I gay for thinking you're hot? So this is always an interesting one. And this, as with most trans topics, when you see people arguing about on, on the internet, you're just going to see a bunch of ignorance from every side. So the libs will say that being with a trans woman is straight, no matter what. It's straight. You're not gay if you if you blow a trans woman. You're not gay. Conservatives will say it's gay all the time. It means you're gay. It means you're a gay man. Sorry to tell both of you. Both of you binary thinking ass hoes. But that's actually incorrect. Why do I know this? Because I actually live my life as a trans woman and I know the type of men that I attract. There's data to back this up. Data you don't have because you don't live the life of a trans woman. I have never had a gay man pursue me sexually, romantically, approach me in a bar, approach me in the gym. Never. Now, do I think that having sex with or dating a trans woman is straight, I think it's its own sexuality. I think it's somewhere in between on the Kinsey scale. And I think that that's common sense. I think that if you have one person in this relationship, in this sexual encounter, whose body is nuanced in the sense of breasts and a penis and feminized elsewhere, but still born biologically male, that's inherently a gray area of sexuality. And I don't understand why I'm not one of these people who thinks that there's all this gray area with like sex, like biological sex itself. I don't think that there's 76 biological sexes. I don't think there's 87 genders, but clearly to anyone who's like ever lived in the world and met different types of people, sexuality is a spectrum. And so the reason people argue about this so much is that You're trying to place men who are attracted to trans women in the gay or straight box. Spoiler alert, maybe they don't fit in either one of those. First of all, you know bisexuality is a real thing, right? Like that's like a a thing. There are people who like both. I don't know why people forget that. But even that's not necessarily an accurate description. I truly believe it is somewhere on the Kenzie scale. And wherever you want to place it is wherever you want to place it. But... I don't think it's gay or straight. I think it's its own sexuality. And this is reinforced by the data I have in my life and my experience by the fact that every man I've ever been with has dated women and trans women. They have never dated a man. And here's where we're like, well, trans women are men. Okay, well, clearly the difference between Vin Diesel and me, and clearly there's going to be a difference between the type of person who is attracted to a Vin Diesel and a me, right? So it's inherently nuanced and people aren't good with that. And I get that, <laughs> but um, I don't know. It's it just, it's a gray area of sexuality. I don't think too much about it because it is what it is. Um, I just know that if, if I'm with a man who has only ever besides me been with women and sometimes maybe like one other trans woman, Looking at that person like they're gay when maybe they've had like marriages behind them or they've had this or that. It's like, that's not a gay man to me. Sorry. Doesn't mean the interaction is 100% heterosexual. I'm not saying that, but it's clearly something else. And like, that's okay. I don't know. It's it's, it's just interesting. Like, sometimes I'll, I'll see this uh, conversation happening on like Twitter. I'm tagged in all sort of like demented conversations on Twitter. Imagine my Twitter mentions. Imagine being me. It's like at any point I can just click on Twitter and see all these crazy conversations people are having about me, about my sex life, about this, with that. And like people are, some people like are so convinced that like gay men approach me or gay men want to bang me. It's like, do you know what being gay is? Do you know what being trans is? I don't think you do. Sorry. It, it really is its own thing in my head. And and from the conversations I've had with trans attracted men, it's its own thing to them as well. They don't, you know. Now, in terms of functionality in relationships outside of sex, in like society, I'm going to function as like a straight relationship because that's what 
on the exterior it appears to be. And with dynamics, like the relationship dynamics, it's way more on the straight side. Sex is something else. Sex is definitely closer to the gay side, but... So it's nuanced and people are so bad with that, but I hate that because I just feel like, I don't know, I hate binary thinkers. So that's the answer. It's its own thing. I know people want me to put it in one box or the other, but that's not like real life. So how did you become friends with Roseanne Barr? Love this unexpected friendship. Oh my God. Uh, let's put Rose- I mean, the picture with Roseanne on the screen. Um, Roseanne's great. So she just moved to Austin, Texas. And we have a bunch of mutual friends. Uh, You know, she does sets over at Joe Rogan's club, the uh, mothership, the new club. And like, I've been there quite a bit. And uh, she had met Michael at the mothership and I wasn't there that night. And she had said that her and her son have been like following me for years, apparently know all about me. They're like fans. And I'm like, that's crazy. You never know who's watching. Um, So then a couple weeks later, we went out to a bar and we went out to the mothership and she did a set. And then the other day I went to her house and she cooked dinner for me and we just like drank and smoked and like hung out on her patio and like talked and it was super fun. So I love Roseanne. She's super sweet. She is everything that you would expect her to be. Just super funny. Um, every time I made her laugh, I would like take note of it. I'm like, I just made one of the funniest people laugh. Uh, so that was really fun. But shout out to Roseanne. What are your thoughts on Steven Crowder's divorce? Is he a monster? So Stephen Crowder's divorce is like a big topic and I don't give a fuck. Can I just say, I don't care about, I hate how social media and being and fame in general has like conditioned the internet to expect all this like dirt about people's personal lives and divorces. Like if you guys notice, I've like taken a huge step back from talking about like my personal relationships and like love life and all that shit, because I think it's so toxic and you can see it here. It's like this expectation that when people break up all of a sudden they're like, the next move is like trying to destroy each other's lives and like leaking court documents and like leaking ring videos. Even if the other person is truly in the wrong, that to me is so demented. Now, there's a ring video where he's treating her very badly, and he looks very badly in it. And I watched that, and I was like, what a fucking asshole. However, I don't know if you can judge a three-minute clip out of a person's, like, decade or more long relationship with someone. I know that if you were to see three minutes of my life or my personal relationships, you could watch a 24-hour feed for a month and not get the full context of, like, my relationships. So... Why would I expect that you can with the Crowder thing? That being said, I think that Crowder is somewhat fair game to talk about in that sense because he is so pro-family values and talks about that and comes from a religious perspective about marriage. And so that does make it sort of on the table to talk about. Um, And that's a big problem with the right in general, by the way, is that none of these hoes live how they act. I'm talking about political commentators, not just people on the right. None of these hoes live how they act. The amount of demented people... Okay, I'll go off. You want me to go off? I'll go off. The amount of demented people that are in the right-wing commentary sphere is actually scary. Um, One thing that the libs do have correct, they're right about shit ever so rarely, but they're right about this. The, a lot of these, not all of them, but a lot of these pro-family values people on the right that become famous for that live like absolute monstrous degenerates in real life orgies, coke, secretly gay. That's another thing they're right about. These libs who think that a lot of these um, right-wing commentators who talk about gay stuff all day long are secretly gay, they're right. There's a lot of them. Actually, a shocking amount of them. And I'm never the type of person to out anyone. But when you hear about this one sending nudes to this one behind his wife's back, a man to a man... When you hear about um, this one uh, cheated on his wife with three guys, this one's doing that, and it's like all credible information and you just know it and some of them reveal it to you in person when they're drunk and talk about what they do. Nuts. Nuts. And it's like, this is why I really avoid mingling with these people, talking to these people, being at these events. It's like, I don't like what goes on at these events. There's a lot of hypocrisy. And it's just so funny because it's like 
the way that I'm talked about sometimes on the right is that like I'm the like degenerate of the commentators. I'm the one promoting like a, a, an effed up lifestyle. I'm the one like the I'm I'm treated like the pariah or the like whatever. My lifestyle is so much more wholesome than so many of the of these like trad con family values conservatives that I've met. And it's just it's just hilarious to me. It's like I'm over here like I've only ever been in like monogamous relationships, never cheated on anyone, like never done hard drugs, like never done some weird like sex stuff behind the scenes or like because the thing about these people that repress their homosexuality of the political commentators on the right is that it's not just that they are secretly gay and so on the side they're like doing stuff with guys. It's they do like immoral sexuality stuff with guys like it's talking like oh you're sending nudes to someone you're making an, a male intern a teenage male intern send you nudes to work for you as a man and you have a wife that's what I'm talking about like so when you repress that sexuality and you're just like projecting stuff all day long it's not just that you're going hooking up with dudes to get your fix is that you're doing really weird shady stuff that comes with like fucked up power dynamics and like it's like predatory right it doesn't come out in just you're just gay on the side it's like you're doing evil gay stuff um so it's it, i always just find it funny because i'm not saying that promoting a family values lifestyle is futile or wrong because i think that society needs that i just think it's so funny how a lot of these people don't live it um and i guess there's an argument to be made for like it's still a net positive to have them promoting it but it always does you know make it seem a bit silly when they get caught or when you know certain things behind the scenes. Um, and again, I would never out people and I just don't run my mouth about people using names. Right. But I think people can read between the lines and see like a lot of like crazy immoral stuff happening. And that's not to say that there aren't, there isn't demon stuff happening with these left wing commentators because I believe they're way worse. <laughs> uh, but it is what it is. Let's see. What is the best and worst part of being such a well-known figure, especially with everything going on with trans right now? I would say the best part is um, I've had a lot of experiences that I would never have otherwise. So being at Roseanne's house the other day, having her cook for me, that's like, how is that real? <laughs> like, that's my life. Okay. And it's not a simulation. Okay. Uh, you know, it's like, I had like a simulation moment the other night. I was at um, Joe Rogan's club on the VIP balcony and I was looking and it, Ron White was next to me. Joe Rogan was next to me and we were watching Roban Roseanne Barr on stage who I came to the club with. And I'm like, this is probably the coolest part, right? Just getting to not in a fan way, but just like interact with people you respect and be respected by people that you respect. Um, and then also little things like, not little things, it's a big thing. It's like, in November, I got invited by a member of Judas Priest to a Judas Priest concert. They gave me like backstage passes and everything. It's like that. How is life real? So that kind of stuff, the perks, the fun experiences, the people you get to meet. That's the best part of it. The worst part of it is probably specifically with the being like a famous trans person is that I'm used in conversations all the time that are highly uncomfortable and people just run their mouths about me in a way that's like just weird like just fucking weird like the other day I clicked on a podcast it was a podcast I've been on it was a podcast that I watch all the time I just clicked at a random point in the podcast right I literally clicked like maybe like an hour and a half into like a three-hour thing and they were in the midst of a debate about what bathroom I should use specifically me and there was people who I knew on the panel and I'm like do I have to be used as the example? I mean, I get it. And I would, and I get that on a career level, it is an accomplishment to, if trans is being talked about, Blair's name is coming up. Like that's a, an accomplishment. It's what I do this for. But at the same time, I'm like, sometimes I'm just like, I get uncomfortable with how much I'm talked about. Um, and then like later in that same video, they were talking about if it's gay or not to suck my dick. And I'm just like, maybe use a different example especially if you know me in real life and you're sitting there on a panel and there's just a complete removal from me as a person that you can talk about if it's gay or not to suck my dick. Like if someone brought up my friend and like their genitals, I'd be like, even if we're going to have this conversation, can we use a different example? Cause I know this person it's weird. I don't know. Sometimes it's just like too much. Um, I don't know if I really answered your question, but 
it just it's just it's just gets stressful you know what i mean and sometimes i get anxiety this is gonna sound like i'm trying to like blow myself here but i'm really not sometimes i get anxiety when i'm out in austin just because more so than when i lived in la like more so i'm very like known here and so Sometimes I have anxiety about like specifically going out in Austin. This is going to sound like I'm trying to be big headed or like whatever, but I know my heart. I'm not um, more, so, way more so than LA. I am much more known here for whatever reason, the demographics of my channel and my social media. I have a lot of Texas people and like Austin's such a like, it's just so known that I'm here because of like going on Rogan and, and with Roseanne, it's like, it's very known I'm here. And so Sometimes going out stresses me out because I would say like 80% of the time there's at least one person who comes up and it's not that coming up is stressful because I love my supporters and I love that. However, sometimes it manifests in weird ways. Let me give you an example. There was a guy that came up to me at the gym the other day and I haven't gone to this gym for like a year. Um, I go to like an old person gym. It's just like me and a bunch of old people, but there was a younger guy who like worked there and I had seen him like looking at me for like a year and my insecurity interpreted it for a year as this guy like clocking me as trans and like looking at me kind of like funny because of it and so I'd always get like a little insecure when he was around and I'd be like oh this guy like totally knows I'm like trans and like is weird about it he finally comes up and he's like he says he's been a fan for so many years so he for a it took him a year to work up the courage to say hi but because of that because of me always seeing him look at me funny I was like always feeling insecure in the gym right so it's not his fault at all and I'm not like oh, this person was a bad person. It was totally me in my own head. But that's an example of sometimes how it can be negative is that sometimes you don't want to be recognized or be seen and you just want to, especially it's like, I think I have a very specific look and, you know, it's like, but I'm not going to say I don't love when supporters come up because it actually does make my day. That's just one example of like when it can get kind of stressful, if that makes sense. Uh, let's see. Next question. Let's see. Will you vote for Trump again in 2024? If it comes down to that being the only option, absolutely. Um, but I'm a DeSantis bitch. You know what I mean? I just feel like DeSantis wields power in a much more effective way. Um, I don't necessarily want to vote for the king of the vaccine again. I don't necessarily want to vote for um, a president who handed off his presidency to Fauci at the end. Where is Fauci? I feel like I haven't even heard anyone talk about Fauci in like months and months and months. It's so weird. He's like not on the radar. It's so bizarre. But anyways, yeah, if it comes down to only Trump, for sure. If you guys enjoyed that short clip from the podcast, make sure you guys subscribe to this channel as well as my main channel and watch the full episode, which will be somewhere on the screen.